So again, welcome for those that don't know me. My name again is Irene Kelly and I'm the Financial Education Program Manager here at Weave. My background is in financial advising, education and economic development. So today I'm very excited to be spending this time with you because I want to approach the topic from a perspective of financial advising so that we can gain the tools that we need to look at our finances in a more objective way. I'm also a yoga teacher. So don't get surprised if we do some breathing as we talk about this topic. Mm -hmm. It's very important to take a moment, especially when, when we're talking about simplifying something that sometimes can feel so complex and overwhelming. So let's, let's really take our time to jump in the topic. So as we start diving in, today we're gonna to be focusing on how we can simplify our finances, not only during COVID, but beyond. We are, at the end of the day, we are here for you. So before we, we, I start going over the content, I would like for us to take a moment to use the chat. And I want to invite all of you to write down one thing that you would like to get from our time together. Please just take one moment to really think about, okay, what motivated me to be here, to watch this webinar? Just take a moment to think about that and feel free to use the chat. I would love to see all of your beautiful faces, but for the interest of time, let's, let's embrace our, our chat and the tools that we do have so we can make this a little more interactive. Okay. And while we while we think about what is it that we want to take from today's session, I want to, to acknowledge some of, the, of, of our people that have been sending some of the responses to have more comfort and ease in finances. Thank you for sharing, Pamela. Absolutely. Yes, yes, especially during COVID. To say that the, the, the last few months have been challenging for most would be an understatement. Money in general can be such a challenging tool for us to use, but at the same time, it can be such an empowering one. So today we're going to embrace what we are experiencing through COVID. We're going to embrace this uncertainty to really take the time to prioritize our finances and to take more control, to understand what is our cash doing? What, what is within my control when it comes to my money? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm seeing some of these great, great responses. Thank you so much for sharing. This is, this is very, very important. And I'm going to try to address all of, those, all of those needs as we go along. So we have all experienced the stress that money can bring. So what I wanna to do today is truly make sure that we can approach the topic from what's within our control so that we can really start simplifying our finances and therefore really addressing the effect that these can have on our well-being as a whole. Spending money means choosing, right? So we are behind those decisions. And even though sometimes it feels like some of these decisions are unconscious or sometimes too conscious that is stressful, that's why we're going to be talking about a model that can help us simplify mm -hmm. so that we can go from overwhelmed to empowered. Mm -hmm. So this model looks a little bit like this. And before we start approaching the model, what I want to do is a quick poll so that we can have these check-in moments. It's very important for us to have these check-ins when we're talking about money. So one of the first things that I would like to do is ask ourselves from one to 10, one being the least confident and 10 being the most confident. Right now, how confident do you feel with your ability to understand and simplify your finances? So you're gonna see this poll in your screen and for those watching the webinar afterwards, this is just important to think about how, how do I feel? And when we add numbers, and we're gonna be talking about 
using numbers to our advantage. Adding numbers is helpful because then we can track progress. So let's start thinking about numbers as a tool. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. We're just gonna give 20, 20 more seconds for those that haven't had the chance to, to go through our poll. Why, the, the reason why we start thinking confidence is that that confidence, right? The, the, our desire to move up that ladder in that confidence, it's going to ultimately motivate us to really take the time to prioritize our finances the way we deserve to prioritize our finances because ultimately our finances can be this incredible tool for us to achieve the future we want. So we're gonna end the poll in two seconds. Thank you so much for your responses. So my goal is that every time that we offer these series that we increase that confidence number, not only with that feeling, but also with the tools that you need. So can, we can truly take, take control of our finances. So thank you so much for your responses. Now, when we look at our finances, especially thinking about what, what we were mentioning before, if we wanna be objective with them, it's easy to separate them into four categories. First, we're gonna be talking about our financial past, right? Because our financial past has a key role in our finances. So we're gonna be addressing that in a moment. Then we're also gonna be talking about our financial present mm -hmm. and how our financial present, it's always changing. So it's important for us to keep this, this ability to adapt to changing circumstances. So that's what we're gonna be uncovering when we talk about financial present. Then we're also gonna be talking about our financial future because like any, like I like to, to relate our finances with a trip. Any trip starts with think, knowing where you wanna go or having an idea of what, the area where you wanna be in, Sometimes when we don't have that clarity of where we want it, where we want to go, at least we should know where we don't want to be and what where we don't want to go. So that we are going to, to be addressing with when we talk about our financial future. And finally, we're going to talk about our strategy, our financial strategy that's going to take us from where we are to where we want to be. So that's really the how. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about these four particular aspects of our finances, we're gonna do so in a way that makes it a little more simple and objective to just approach our finances and therefore make better financial decisions. Mm -hmm. So if we start by taking that trip analogy, right? When we're gonna take a trip, if we start thinking of our vehicle, right? Before we take the trip, we have to check if our vehicle is ready for us to take the trip, right? If our vehicle, how many, how many miles does our vehicle has? Does I, do I have any problem with my vehicle? So it's really starting to think about, okay, what am I bringing with me into this journey? So that's when we start thinking about financial past, because if we're bringing too much, then maybe we have to address that. So I'm gonna share with you a, a quotation that has been very powerful for me when it comes to thinking about our financial past. In that quote, I want us to take a moment here to read it out loud together. Your past doesn't determine who you are. Your past prepares you for who you are to become. Our financial past is where most of our financial mindset and our habits started. So understanding our financial past and learning from it is going to require that we really have compassion in regards to what we start finding out of our financial past. So we really need to be compassionate and to be proactive. What do I mean by this? When we're thinking about, I'm gonna share with you a series of questions that are very helpful when it comes to analyzing what is serving me from my financial past and what's not serving me so that we can really start taking control and being more proactive with those things that are no longer serving us. So here, 
if we start feeling a little like, okay, well, that's going to be like opening up kind of worms, that's okay because we all have different, very unique financial pasts. And it's important to look at them without judging, right? We, we're not going to be judging our families. We're not going to be judging our previous environment. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to look at them objectively and identify what serves us and what doesn't serve us and be proactive about that. So I'm going to remind you and encourage you to just, as we go along this conversation, remember that this process, it's more like a marathon than a sprint, right? So it's going to be a journey and we're not alone in this journey. So if at any point you're like, okay, I'm starting to remember all these things, just breathe, breathe and remember that again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So how do we begin this journey? Here I have four questions that we're gonna, that are very, very helpful when it comes to understanding our financial past. One of the questions, let's, let's go through them together. How were finances handled in your home during your childhood? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna invite you to take, take time with these questions. This is not gonna be the, the first, the first, and I, I hope this is not the first and only time that, we, that you address the, the answers to these questions. This should be a process because we're gonna be discovering different things together. As a financial advisor, I witnessed how powerful it can be to become aware of the answers to these questions and the power that we give to these questions. Because sometimes we can have this fantastic financial strategy, but if we don't address our financial baggage and if we don't address the things that are slowing us down in terms of that financial success, our strategy is not gonna serve us. So I really want to make sure that we do address our financial path so that all of your work to create a great strategy is not in vain. And, it, and you can really use that strategy you create. So another question could be, what money management lessons did you learn growing up? Good and bad, right? Here, here it's very important to not only focus on the negative ones, because we all, I guarantee you, that we all have some positives and some negatives as well. So it's important to think about the both. Again, remember to be objective and compassionate. We're not here to judge. We're here like a financial advisor. We're just here to really be objective with what we start uncovering. If anything comes up, if you think of, of something important, I, I'm going to invite you to write it down. Mm -hmm. Write it down because this is going to be something that is going to require additional work. And also feel free if any thoughts come up or any questions come up, please feel free to use the chat so that we can dive deeper into any questions that come up. Another really good question. What fears and feelings towards money did you absorb growing up? We might have absorbed a lot of fears and feelings that were not ours. And those affect the way in which we approach our finances, the way in which we approach risk. So it's important to just acknowledge those. And the last question, what achievements and financial problems did you experience growing up, right? Both challenges and achievements, both are very important. So the best way in which we can begin to understand and also simplify our financial past is by, start, by identifying these items, the, the good and the bad. So that once we identify the negative aspects, we can begin a process of letting them go because they no longer serve us and they no longer serve that vision we have for our financial future. So once we go through these questions, the key is going to be to take advantage of what we learn, right? To take those lessons, be aware of our financial past and the role it plays in our present life. The role that these financial past plays, we can notice it in Particularly, we can notice it in two different areas. One is our financial mindset and the other one would be our financial habits. So we're gonna be talking about those as well. So once we, once we start this process, we start connecting that concept of my, our financial past with our financial present. And that's when we start seeing our past come up in things like our financial mindset. Our financial mindset basically is the series of thoughts and beliefs that we have in association with money. 
they tend to be a product of what we learned growing up, a product of our environment, our culture, our family, our values, our beliefs. It's, it's, it's complex. Our financial mindset can be something very complex. So it's important to start connecting those dots, right? Start connecting our financial past with how it affected the way I think about money, right? The way we approach money. So this case also very tied to what we call money self-talk, right? Do you feel worthy and capable of managing your money? Do you feel like you are able to get paid what you deserve to be paid, right? This is where we start thinking about how do I approach money? Do you give your financial well-being the time and energy that it deserves? Do you prioritize it? Is it that important? So this is when financial mindset comes in. And this is, this is a very good moment for us to start identifying if our mindset is limiting us in any way. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have that, that challenge when our mindset is not that abundance mindset, right? When we, we're, we're always thinking, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. I don't know if I will ever have enough money. That mindset can be limiting because we could have, we could approach these different mindset where we're like, you know what, if I learn, if I manage my money properly and I, if I know that I can have more money to use efficiently, to, to approach my life with this lens of this is what I want and this is what I want for my financial future, that's a different mindset, right? So our mindset can be can be very powerful. So it's important for us to, to start thinking about what thoughts and beliefs do you have associated with them? Now, these thoughts and beliefs, these mindset is directly connected with our financial habits. Our financial habits are the regular financial behaviors and conducts that we go through, sometimes unconsciously, sometimes consciously, right? It's like, different habits we might have, like hygiene, like brushing our teeth, washing our hands, like our financial habits be become these, these just behaviors that we follow. So it's important to recognize if there are some financial habits that might be blocking our financial success, our financial future. So according to psychologist Linda Fox, the, and a habit is, is the composition of a habit is divided into three. One would be the motivation, either learned or acquired. Then we would have the skill, and then we would have a triggering factor. So here, it's helpful to think about some examples. So in terms of positive financial habits, and this is a really good time to use the chat as well. What, when I say positive financial habits, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? Just take a moment. Or also, if you think of like a negative financial habit, also if whatever came to mind, let's let's use our chat to start sharing. One, um, I want to see what. Not overspending. Yes, that's such a that's such a good habit. Very very good habit. There's also saving. Right, saving is such a powerful financial habit to have. Sometimes we could even make our habit easier by automating certain processes. Making a grocery list, that's a very good habit because we tend to overspend. Yes, Stephanie, you got it. Making a list, absolutely. Yes, we're connected. Also, checking inventory before making any purchases. That's a really good habit because we tend sometimes to forget that we all already have what we're looking for and we buy extra. So that's another good habit. So when we're trying to change, a negative habit. That's why I like to think about habits in regards to their composition. Because if we need to maybe add a motivation, then maybe that can help us change a habit. Example, if you know exactly what you're saving for and it's something that excites you, it's going to be easier to incorporate behaviors that help us save, right? Putting 10% away from each paycheck. Yes, yes, yes. I love that habit. I love that habit. That's a very, very good one to have. So you can see how 
everybody has different different habits and we can all learn from each other and we can also start exploring if i have a habit that i don't like like for example you know i don't i don't make a grocery list ever like i just go to the grocery store when we look at the composition of a habit that's where we can start thinking okay if i add if i make it easier on myself like like a triggering factor if i have a little post it note or like a like a little notepad by the fridge with a cute pen pencil that might trigger us to write a list right so it's we have to be creative when it comes to our financial habits so here I, i'm going to encourage you to think about what financial habits do you want to change and which ones do you want to maintain okay. i'm going to repeat that here what financial habits do we want to change and which ones do we want to maintain anything that comes up i'm going to encourage you again write it down because this is going to be very helpful as you get into the habit of having these regular financial check-ins with yourself for yourself for your business this is going to be very very helpful because you're uncovering things already mm -hmm. so we are going to now as we start talking about financial habits mindset this is already touching the financial present territory because these are things that we do every day okay and i'm, I'm noticing another another note i tend to give in to what my kids ask for every time that's hard that's hard especially if you if, if our kids are cute and they are they're behaving properly and especially during COVID, it's challenging right sometimes it's challenging to make these decisions so it's going to be very important for us to first be aware right because once we are aware of things that we want to tweak then it's just a matter of being proactive right when we think okay how can i say no in a way that is helpful and it's also and I, we take advantage of that opportunity to also pass this on this is this is one of the biggest reasons why we do this is because we know that sometimes we don't get access to the financial tools and education that we need so once we do it's our duty to start passing that on especially to our kids especially at home because that's truly when where we where we learn so i'm going to invite you to think about creative ways in which you can take a moment to say you know what we actually do have money, but we are going to be using it for this. So we start teaching kids how to prioritize between what we should buy and between what we should do with money because we have control. So that's, that's going to be an important, an important lesson as we go along to take advantage of moments where you would normally think, I, I don't know what to say that's that's okay because this that's an opportunity to say you know what i don't know but let me tell you something and that's when we take advantage of those moments to teach and talk more about money mm -hmm. so let's remove the stigma from having money conversations and let's just start having more of those so financial present once we start identifying okay these are the behaviors that i that i go through every day that really starts getting into financial present territory so when we talk about financial present this is really answering the question where are we today if we go back to our trip analogy this is where we would check our current location right where am i in the map right how much gas do i have am i good to go or do we have to fix something if we are in, in that in that trip scenario what's going to be if we find an issue, let's say that we find that we got to get gas, right? We're low on gas. What's going to be the best attitude moving forward to just think, oh my God, I need to get gas and worry about it or just be proactive and think, okay, I need to find a gas station. What's the plan? I need to be objective. Always being proactive is the healthiest alternative, right? Being objective, healthiest alternative. We tend to think a lot about money and there's studies that show that just thinking and worrying about money can elevate our blood pressure so 
when we think about money, it's important to be conscious of what that does to our well-being. So those are very important opportunities that we can take to just be more proactive and be more objective. So let's take a deeper look in, in regards to what financial present is and what it encompasses. So our financial present, we already, we already touched on a little bit, it incorporates mindset and habits, but very importantly, it incorporates our priorities and our needs. And these ones change, right? Life is change. Sometimes we just forget, but change is a constant in our life. That's why when we think about our finances, it's important to acknowledge that they have to be flexible. They have to move along with us. So having these check-ins where we evaluate, okay, first and foremost, what are my priorities and needs and have they changed? Second, mindset and habits. How are these affecting my financial present? And then we start getting to the numbers, right? What's my budget? What's my income? What are my expenses? What's my net worth? And this is where we start thinking, right? What's that balance between what I have and what I owe? Now, here, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that this model can work for both our personal finances and our business finances, right? I usually recommend that we start applying this model to our personal finances first, because once we have that control over our personal finances, it becomes easier or a little less stressful to approach our business finances under this lens. And they are interconnected, right? So knowing that we are good at home, knowing that our personal finances are strong or knowing what we need to work on, it's going to enable us to be a little more objective when we go to our business finances. So as we move along, I want you to keep that in mind. Like this model can work for both. And I encourage you to first apply it to your personal finances. So once we go through this list, once we, we're, once we really kind of respond to, to, to the different questions that come up, like what are my biggest priorities, right? Food, shelter, emergency fund. Mm -hmm. What mindset do I, do I need to, what aspects of my mindset do I need to tweak? Or what aspects of my, of my mindset are working for me, right? So once we really start looking into our financial present, once we identify the first two sections that we're showing here, priorities, needs, mindset, habits, that's when we start getting into our numbers. Our numbers are oftentimes this aspect of our finances that we don't like or that we avoid. And today I'm here to tell you that Numbers can be such a powerful tool. Our numbers can help us tell a story. So it's, it's going to be important for us to, as we like to call it, face our numbers, right? Face and understand our numbers. So here I want to take a moment for us to use a chat. And I want to, to ask this question for, for all of us. Why is it? Why do you think that sometimes we avoid looking at our numbers? Why? Why do we do it? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, we're going to take a moment to use the chat. And the reason why we ask these questions is um, in the field of psychology, there's this approach to facing things that we don't like called name entertainment, right? Once we name what we are struggling with, it's going to be so much easier to tame it, to tame that fear, to tame that discomfort, right? Thank you so much for sharing. It's sometimes feeling like we don't have enough. That is a very, very scary feeling. And this fear, right, this fear can be such an obstacle because at the end of the day, when we have this fear, when we feel uncomfortable about facing our numbers, it's going to, to, be more, to be very helpful if we try to separate, right? Numbers are, at the end of the day, 
they're just straightforward, right? They're just going to tell us a story. And ultimately, it's up to us to take this story and be proactive with it and think about, okay, being realistic, right? If I don't like what I see, what do I need to do today to start tweaking that and to start arranging my finances so that eventually I can like what I see, right? So that if we don't like what we're seeing, this is a good time to start looking at our finances in a more holistic way so that we focus on what's within our control. Mm -hmm. So again, facing our numbers means letting them tell us a story so that if they can point towards areas of growth and areas of opportunity. And again, I, this is where I recommend start with your personal, then move to your business. Because also when we start with our personal, we're going to get a better understanding of how much income we want, how much income we need. And that number, it's going to lead us to, in our business, are we charging enough, right? And that is a topic that we're going to cover in, in, in future webinars. But this is a very good start. This is a moment where we start identifying, okay, I don't like this. Well, what do we need to do for you to look at these numbers and, and like what you see? And also be patient, right? Remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And here, I do want to take a quick moment to do a, a quick poll for our business owners. Mm -hmm. Here, our when we're talking about facing and understanding our numbers, the systems that we use are very, very, very important because ultimately the systems that we use allow us to stay organized. And the more organized we are, the easier it's going to be for us to understand the numbers, right? Once we face them, how do we understand them if they're not organized? So, that's why it's going to be particularly important for us to, to really be organized, right? And use systems. Sometimes technology can be a really, really good ally. So let's find, let's start finding what is it that's gonna help us. So just really quickly for our business owners here with us today, I just wanna know what systems do you use? Because we've noticed that for our personal finances sometimes, as long as we're organized, sometimes we can do a pen and paper. Sometimes we can do spreadsheets and it's more manageable when we're talking about our personal finances. But once we start talking business finances, it can get very overwhelming if we don't have a system in place. So take a moment to just go through, go through our, our poll. This is gonna be very helpful for us as we move along so we can start incorporating other webinars that are gonna better serve you. Mm -hmm. Perfect, so we're just gonna give it two more, 10 more seconds. And this is a good moment. We're gonna have way to pause, make sure that you're feeling comfortable, that you have your water, notes, because we're getting into number sections. So this is gonna be a, a good moment to start writing down. What are the things that are gonna be in our to-do list, okay? Very good, thank you so much for your responses. Mm -hmm. Very good. So numbers. So let's take a moment, take a deep breath with me. As I warned you, we were going to be doing so deep inhale here and exhale all you've got. Very good. So now let's face these numbers. When we are approaching our finances, especially our numbers, there's going to be two as we, as we talked in this, in this slide before, there's, there's gonna be two main statements or two main financial documents that are gonna be very helpful for us and for us to look at that story and what is it that we need to work on. The first one, our income and expenses. Mm -hmm. These could be compared to our profit and loss statement for a business, right? And this document is really going to help us into just identifying, right? What's within my control? How am I managing what's within my control? That's why we, we start with analyzing our expenses. Our expenses can tell us a lot about our financial priorities. So in the exercise before, when we're talking about financial present and you named your priorities, 
when we look at our expenses, that's where we really make sure that they are aligned. Because sometimes our priorities are some, and when we look at our expenses, we're not really spending money on, on the things that matter. So that's why make sure this is where we make sure that there's that alignment, right? If you were to categorize all of your expenses, which ones would be the biggest categories, right? And those biggest categories, they tend to correlate like shelter, right? Rent, mortgage, food. They tend to correlate with our financial priorities. And that, so that's good. That's a good sign. Now, that's where we start asking. Once we categorize, we start identifying whether those categories are wants versus needs. Mm -hmm. And when we're looking at things that we don't need, things that we want, that's where we can start thinking about what else could I be, could we be using that money for? And that's when we, that's why we call opportunity costs, especially now when we have all these different ones that are competing with each other, when there's much more uncertainty within our lives and our finances, the things we want, they go to tier two, right? But still, we can identify within our budget, within our statements that we, we're, we still spend here and there on things we want. So it's important for us to identify those because those ones, we can be using that money for something else, or we can be using that money to save for the future, save for the unexpected, right? It's all about analyzing those opportunity costs and being very conscious of those decisions. If you say, you know, I want to, to get a massage. If you are consciously saying, okay, I want this, it's, it's something that I need in my budget. If you're conscious about it, there you go. Here, the goal is to be very conscious of those expenses and deciding, you know, I'm okay with this. I'm okay spending money on this instead of that because this helps me and that's it, right? But being conscious and making those, those differentiations between wants and needs. Then when we talk about our income, mm -hmm, here income is really when we have to think creatively about our income because sometimes it feels that our income is not under our control. However, there are aspects of our income that are absolutely within our control. So some questions that can help us in that, in that sense would be first, is your income fair and enough considering your skill set and work? Mm -hmm. So here we can start identifying if there's, if there's an opportunity in this space. Then asking ourselves, have we had additional sources of income that we could reconsider, right? Going from that list of skill set Right? Sometimes we have very, very powerful skills that could gener help us generate some additional income. So that's why being creative in this category might be very helpful. Another question, do we have a process in place to pay ourselves through our savings? So pretty much, do we save first or do we save last? And here I'm going to really encourage you, save first, always, right? Even if it's a small amount, small, small, small amount, but we save first because that is paying ourselves. That's separating some of that income for our future selves, okay? Now, the other piece in this numbers equation would be our balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Our balance sheet is where we can see what we have, what we own versus what we owe. So starting for what, from what we owe. Now, let's start with what we own, right? If we start with what we own, we start with our assets. So here's where we can ask ourselves, what type of assets do we currently own? And if we don't own any assets at this point, this is where we can start thinking about that financial future. What do we want to own, right? Because that's gonna be a big piece in our financial future and our financial strategy. You're also thinking that assets are not only tangible items, right? Assets can be intangible as well. So keeping this open mind in terms of what is it that we own and what is it that we have that can ultimately be translated into dollars, right? And here asking also what assets do we need to protect and ensure for our future? So once we, when we're looking at our balance sheet, that's the very, very good place to think about, okay, do I need to protect any of these assets, right? So 
once we think about our assets that way, we can start looking also at our liabilities, right? Looking at what is it that we owe at this point. And here, the first thing is to consider what type of debt do we have, right? And ask ourselves if that debt is good debt or bad debt. Good debt would be the one that could also be considered an investment in our future. So a chass, a home, a mortgage, student debt, right? These, it's, this is good debt because it's basically like this investment in ourselves, in our business, in our future. In this piece, this is where it's going to be very important to visualize, right? We need to name entertainment. We need to visualize how much we owe so that we can start managing that accordingly. So how is your debt being managed right now? That's very important for us to ask ourselves when we're looking at our balance sheet. So another good piece to think about here is our mindset. And I'm just going to mention this because for me, it's very important to make sure that everyone knows that we should never allow our net worth right, the number of oh, how much I have at the end of the day, affect our self-image, our self-worth. Mm -mm. Never, never let those numbers affect how you feel about yourself. Because money at the end of the day is just this tool that we utilize. Okay, so just very important to check in with our mindset when we're looking at those numbers, right? Check in with our judgment, check in with whether or not we're looking at these numbers in a way that it's compassionate and proactive. Okay, so always keep your mind in check when, we, when you're looking at your numbers, especially when we don't like what we see. Because remember that there's a lot that is not in our control and that's okay. So focusing on, when we look at the numbers, focus on what's within your control and let that drive you. Let that help you be proactive and stay objective. Mm -hmm. Eventually, uh, ultimately, I think that that's one of the best ways in which we can approach our finances in a way that doesn't affect our health and our well-being. Mm -hmm. So this is where we start approaching financial future. Okay, so once we identify, okay, these are my numbers. This is what I need. This is my mindset at this point. Once we start really grasping how they interact, this is where we can start thinking future, right? My vision. So going back to our trip analogy, our financial future where we, where would be where we decide where are we going, right? Knowing where we're going on a trip gives us clarity and gives us direction, which also means that we waste less resources, right? Knowing where we want, we're not going to be doing all these detours, so we're not going to waste resources on our trip. So here, I just want to remind you some words of wisdom actually from my dad, <laughs> believe it or not. He said, if you don't know where you want to go, which is normal, sometimes when we have uncertainty, we, we just feel like, I don't know. I don't know where I want to go at this point. Start by identifying what you don't want and start by identifying where you don't want to go. So that's going to be helpful if we're feeling that uncertainty is starting to affect the, the future of our, of our personal finances, of our business finances. Just have this thought of where, where is it that I don't want to go? Okay, and start from there. One beautiful place to start is thinking emergency savings. That's always when you think financial future, especially when we look at uncertainty. One way in which we can take control is start planning on emergency savings, right? That's one thing that's going to give us a little bit of control, even in times of uncertainty. So that's one, that's one part of the vision that we can incorporate in, in, in financial future. So what affects our financial future, right? Many items, politics, right? Our ability to generate income, family situation, our health, many, many items, right? Our strategy, change. So here is again thinking what aspects are under our control strategy goals and our ability to adapt our resilience those items are within our control so we're going to focus on those 
So going back to that, the, the car and the trip analogy, this is where we say, okay, this is where we're going. So that way we focus on what we can control, which is, you know, let's, let's drive, let's head there. So financial future would be divided into three, the three sections that I just mentioned. Financial goals. So basically, what do we want to achieve financially? Financial strategy. How am I going to achieve what I want? And how am I going to manage those goals? And lastly, our financial resiliency. How can we prepare to recover from future change and from future misfortune, right? How can we be prepared? So let's start with financial goals. Our financial goals, this is a very, this is the part where we get to motivate ourselves. This is a part where we get to, if, if we really take the time to think about what we want, this is going to be the driver for us to sit down, look at our numbers and, and feel that motivation because we know that we have a say in what we're doing. And that's very, very powerful. So we like to, to use in, in finance finances and many, I, I, I guarantee that some of you might have, have already heard of SMART goals. This is a way in which we arrange goals that makes it so much more likely for us to achieve them because they are structured, they are realistic. So establishing SMART goals, like the word SMART says, our acronym here today, we start by making it very specific. And we're going to go through an example. Let's go back to that concept of emergency savings. Let's say that we we don't have an emergency fund and our goal is to start a small emergency fund. And we say, you know, I want to save $6,000 in a year, right? Just to have there for any mild emergencies. So that's very specific, right? I know what I'm saving for. I know how much I'm saving for. Then have it be, let it be measurable. We can measure, there's a number there, $6,000, right? Make it achievable. Make it something that you can accomplish. Otherwise, it is going to become this stressful goal, and that's not the goal here, right? We want to make our goal something that motivates us. So let's, if we want it to be achievable, let we divide it, right? Six thousand in a year. How much do I have to save per month? Okay, if I have to save five hundred dollars per month, can I achieve that? Can I do it, right? And if the answer is yes, then that means that the goal is realistic, right? And making the making the goal realistic, it's particularly important because then we can actually start feeling feeling ourselves there. We know that we can do it, right? And it's realistic within our budget. It's realistic within what we have in our numbers. So we have to go back to our budget. We have to go back to our numbers to make sure that that goal fits in that budget. And time bound, that makes us much more accountable, not only to ourselves, but others. That's why having our goals be more specific and have these features is going to enable us to achieve the goals easier. Financial strategy would be our how, right? Once we identify where we want to go and where we are, our financial strategy becomes our how. So it's how we take control of our financial future. That's how we reduce uncertainty because we basically have a plan. So back to the trip analogy, our financial strategy becomes our GPS. Mm -hmm. And here, this, this strategy is very, can be very powerful because it gives us clarity when there's none. And it gives us direction when we feel lost, especially among uncertain times. So working in our financial strategy can be very, very powerful. And it can also, this is the part where we break our financial goals into smaller steps, like what we did in the previous example, where we started with a year goal, we broke it down into month by month. And then we basically, what we're doing is reverse engineering our budget. I like it much more that way. I think it's more fun. When you start building your budget, but from a place of, okay, I already covered priorities and needs, then my, the things that I want to achieve I break them down, I add them to my budget. So we start from what we want for the future, then we reverse it to add all that to my budget. So the budget becomes this tool that we're much more involved with, we're much more proactive with, right? And all of these 
of course, it's going to help us stay organized, right? Our financial strategy should facilitate the process and should make us feel much more organized. So if this is a place where we start identifying, okay, where, how am I gonna allocate my funds? What am I gonna prioritize? We start getting into the, the, some of the pieces we've talked before, systems, right? How do we stay organized? Because there's a lot of moving pieces, right? Especially once we, once we start transitioning into our business finances, the strategy can become a little more complex. So that's why it's important to part of our strategy is to think about systems. So staying organized, that's going to be important for a strategy. If we're talking personal finances, using systems like Mint or Excel and automated automating payments, that's going to be very helpful as well so that we can reduce that stress of, oh, did I pay that on time? Did I not, right? So using our technology and our tool, the tools at our disposal. Then business finances, right? Using tools like QuickBooks or other accounting software, automating, right? And definitely in that for both, regular financial reviews for both. Very, very important. Another piece that could be very helpful is working with a team, right? Especially when we're talking business finances, we are not alone, right? There's so many professionals that truly, truly want to be part of, of, of a team behind that business owner. So depending on where we are and what we need, we can find different professionals. Like we can work with a bookkeeper if we want someone that can help us accurately record transactions and help us sometimes with payroll, provide reports on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. That's one, that's one very good, valuable member of a team. We can find an accountant. An accountant would be would help us prepare more like detailed financial statements. Would they can help us perform audits for of our books? We can also partner with a CPA or an enrolled agent if we need someone to to have a standing within the IRS and represent us in matters of like signing tax returns or just representing clients during audits. So it really depends on where we are and what we're what we're looking for for a business that we find the right professionals. And also we can have financial coaches or advisors help us stay on track with goals and strategies. And also very important, keep learning, right? This is, again, this is a journey, right? And things are always changing. So it's important for us to, to remain curious. And here I, I added not only some of my recommendations, but some of my team's recommendations for, for keep, how can we keep learning about finances Great books here, Mindful Money from Jonathan Dio, Make Your Kita Money Genius. I really like that book. It breaks down in, it breaks it down into ages. So it can be very, very cool. Worth it by Amanda Steinberg. Very, very valuable tool, very empowering tool. And also I added this um, this resource, nerdwallet.com. That's a very good web page if you ever want to compare different financial products. Because at the end of the day, you know. If we are in control, our duty is also to find the right partners and find the right products. So giving ourselves that time and using tools that can help us compare and study different products, that can be very, very helpful. So lastly, we have our fin the, the financial resilience component. That's within our control. So resiliency is, is that ability we have to recover from or adjust to misfortune or change. I can't tell you how much resilience I have seen in the past couple of months. And I think it's, it's very important for us to remind ourselves that as species, we are innately resilient. But sometimes we, we forget, we get so used to the day-to-day -day that we forget of how incredibly resilient we can be. So here is where I'm gonna invite you to think about staying flexible, staying adaptable, staying persistent. Right, when we're flexible, we accept change. We don't fight it. So what's the point, right? What's the point of fighting it? Your energy is too precious. Your time is too precious for fighting change. We accept and respond to it, right? Then we adapt. We learn from our experiences. And finally, we're persistent. We don't give up easily. So if you're, if you're feeling sometimes that I don't, I'm done with change, Remember, remember how resilient you 
innately are. And repeat this, right? I accept and respond to change. I can learn from experience. I don't give up easily. And just doing that exercise of saying it out loud can help us shift that mindset and get us on that proactive mode. So if we can develop confidence in our own resilience, both personally and as business owners, our lives will feel less stressful. And more importantly, we will be able to radiate that feeling out into the community around us, out into our families, out into our kids. And we need that now more than ever. So I really want to invite you to really remember, remember your own resilience and have confidence in it. Because the fact that you're here today with me tells me that you are resilient, that you are prioritizing your financial well-being. So I want you to feel very proud of that. And I want you to keep in that journey with us. So we're reaching the end of our session. We're a little, um, we're a little after in time, so I apologize. So here, I really want to just start by really kind of summarizing what we've been talking about today. So our financial strategy, our successful financial strategy is going to combine four items. The first item, it, our strategy takes the lessons from our financial past. It adapts to our present needs and priorities, is based on what we want for our financial future, and it also keeps us accountable to ourselves and others. This combination is going to make it much more simple for us to approach our finances in a way that it's more objective, in a way that it's more compassionate, and in a way that ultimately leads us to be in control and use money as an empowering tool, not as an overwhelming one. Mm -hmm. So here, I want to do the last poll of our session today. And we're gonna go back to that question that we started with, okay? From one to 10, one being least confident and 10 being most confident. How confident do you feel with your ability to understand and simplify your finances? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a moment. And this is really a process, right? Here, it's going to be very important for us to remember that this is a journey, right? This is a marathon, not a sprint. And you are not running alone. If we are patient with ourselves and we know that we can always continue to learn, that's ultimately going to help us navigate the whole financial, financial world from a much more positive and a much healthier mindset. So remember, right? This is a marathon, not a sprint, and you're not running alone. So here, if you have any, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay for a little bit in case we have any additional questions. One thing that I would like to do, you're very welcome, Catherine. One thing that I would like to do is as we started talking about simplifying our finances and we started touching on businesses, right? How can we simplify our businesses? I would like to take one minute of your time to introduce you to my colleague, Haley Ebert. Haley is our program coordinator and she is going to tell us a little bit about a program that can actually help you simplify not your finances, especially thinking about simplifying our business finances. So here, I just need to give Haley permission to talk. My dear, you, have, you should have permission to talk. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. To the slide. Oh, wonderful. Yes, uh, welcome, Haley. <laughs> thank you, Irene. Um, I am so excited to tell you a little bit more about our new live plan training program. We designed this course in order to, like Irene said, help clients to simplify the process of writing a business plan and make it a little bit less daunting um, for those who are busy running their own business. So we 
um, created this six week live plan class and it's an accelerated course in which clients will produce both a business pitch and business plan at the end and submit it for feedback from our instructor. Uh, our goal again is to prepare clients to write a business plan that will help access them access to funding um, and use to one day open their dream business or expand the business that they currently own. Clients meet online twice a week over Zoom with a cohort of 15 people. They gain access to connections not only through the cohort, but also with their instructor, meeting one-on-one -on -one with them twice throughout the course to gain specialized advice in their own business. We use the Life Plan online business plan software in order for clients to have a really, like Irene said, simplified and user-friendly template for their plan. Um, and the instructor has the ability to give comments and feedback in real time throughout the course. We have just started our fall 2020 course this week, and we will probably begin enrollment for our next cohort in early 2021. Um, if you do have questions regarding the class or want to be placed on an interest list, please do. Haley. Haley, Haley, for a moment, we stopped hearing you. Oh, sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> um, Anyway, if you are, I'm not sure where I left off, but if you are interested, please do uh, email my email. It's at the, on the slide at the bottom to stay updated. And I would love to answer any questions or talk you through the uh, process of enrollment and what the class will entail. Thank you, Haley. And I just added Haley's email to our chat box if you just want to copy it save it so that you can ask. I don't see any questions in the chat, but again, feel free to add anything. Um, I believe Haley's going to stay here a little bit as well. And I want to, I want to thank her for providing us with this insight because when we're talking finances, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Especially when we're, when it comes to, to our businesses, there's so much to cover and it's important to know that you're not alone in this process. So to wrap our session today, I just want to show you the list of our upcoming webinars. This was the first, and I'm so excited that you were here with us. This was the first of our financial education series. Our next webinar, it's actually next week, we have, it's called How to Organize Your Finances with QuickBooks Online. Then we have a very, very cool webinar called Work-Life Balance for Working Parents in November. And in November as well, we have Managing and Understanding Your Debt During COVID. That one is going to be facilitated by myself. So if you want to join us for any of these webinars, you're so welcome to do so. I also added here my contact information in case you have any questions. Let me copy this and paste it also in the chat so it's easier for you to contact us. And I would encourage you, if you're not signed up uh, for a newsletter, please do so because that's where you get all the news about upcoming webinars. These are only the ones for October and November. We also have some for December that might be valuable for you. So again, I just wanna take the time to thank you. Thank you for taking the time to work on your finances and your financial well-being for yourself, for your businesses and I will stay here for five more minutes in case I have any questions. Please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A, whatever is easier for you. Thank you. Yes, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember to, that this is a process, right? Be patient with our, with, we gotta be patient with ourselves and take the time. You're so welcome, Pamela. You're very, very welcome. And you should be getting your recording as well after our session. So thank you again for being here with us today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.